Now, Sunder, in spite of the fact of all of these eyewitnesses claiming and proclaiming that they had seen Jesus, all right, there are some people that have objections to that, okay? They don't think very clearly, and one of those objections is, well, what really happened is the, the, the disciples somehow, they got by those Roman guards and they stole the body of Jesus. What would you say to them? Well, first of all, I think it's not that easy to say they somehow got by the Roman guard because <laughs> for a Roman guard to fail their duty, it because it was sealed. There was a seal of Rome was on. That seal of Rome was more valuable to them than the death of a hundred Jewish people. And so they would have killed anybody who tried to do that, first of all. So it's not that easy. But let's assume somehow they managed to do that. Let's assume they somehow managed to roll the stone back. And that would be to roll a massive stone uphill, which they couldn't have. And all that without the soldiers ever finding out. Here's the question. The fact is, what motivation would they have had? First of all, they would have had no psychological motivation at all. For three years, they had given up everything. Two men who were walking on the road to Emmaus on the Sunday morning that Jesus rose from the dead. They were talking with each other. You know what they said? Oh, we had hoped. Oh, we had hoped. Oh, we had hoped. They were hopeless people. The cross had killed their hope. They were not, in that frame of mind, who would then want to go, hey, let's steal the body of Jesus. That's the first problem. Secondly, after that, they would have had to hide this body somewhere and then go out and preach that this Jesus raised from the dead. Somebody put it this way, you may be willing to die for a truth, martyrs do that all the time, you may even be willing to die for a lie that you thought was the truth, but no one would die for a lie that they themselves had perpetrated was a lie. And so the psychological motivations were lacking before and after. So when you put the physical impossibilities and the psychological impossibilities there's no way they could have stolen yeah. the body. You have a very good illustration about what happened uh, in the U.S. presidency in a, in a, in a thing called Watergate. Mm -hmm. And there was a man, the, uh, the lawyer to the president, whose name was Chuck Colson. And he was one of the men that was caught up in this uh, uh, controversy called Watergate. And he uh, had something to say about this thing of people holding on to a lie for 40 years and never spilling it and dying for something they knew was untrue. What, what was that? Basically, the Watergate experience was all perpetrated on lies. And he said, we had 12 men who couldn't even hold on to the lie for two or three weeks. And here we have to believe that these 12 men perpetrated a lie for years and years and years. So I think that's actual evidence that says further it's a psychological impossibility to do that.